Hello everyone, Man of Interest here with This Week in Keyboards, your regular keyboard news show. And despite all the craziness going on in the world right now, the keyboard news must go on. So we're going to do things a bit different today. Uh, yeah, different sets. My main set is currently uh, set up for another video and it might be torn down or something later, we'll see. So everything from the lens, camera, lighting, it's all a bit different, but same show. Same show, different details. So what's going on this week? Well, whoa, do my eyes deceive me? No GMK sets, what a time to be alive. But hey, that doesn't mean we're done with Cherry Profile just yet, because our first topic is JTK Sinan by JT Keycaps. These will be Trouble Shot JDK keycaps featuring Hiragana Sublegends. The inspiration for the set is pretty cool and interesting to see that red and blue really uh, jive together with that gold. I like that there is an option to not have to use those blue modifier accents because uh, those don't look great, especially those blue F5 through F8. It doesn't really fit and work for me, but eh, maybe for you. If we see the same or a similar price point as JDK Classic FC or Classic Trouble Troubleshot, these keycaps are going to be in a pretty good place. I personally haven't had a chance myself to try any Triple Shot JDK keycaps, but I hear they're not the worst, if that means anything at all. Next, we have PBT Grey Anne by Langlandia. Okay, so this is a, a quote here from the interest check. Soothing, mysterious, cold, brooding. All and more could be used to describe the main color used in this set. The one thing I cannot seem to come to an accord with is whether it's a green or a gray. I'm certain it's both. What? what? No, 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 the main color of the set is green. How is that even a point of contention? Green is the main color without a doubt. And you know what? It's not a bad green. The muted beige and dark red kind of really, muted beige isn't gray, and dark red really work with this set, I think. The set will be running over on the key company for those of us here in the US, and since it's PBT through the key company, Easy assumption is they're going to be using Infiniki reverse die subs for the keycaps. And you know, from my experience, the reverse die subs aren't the worst video coming soon. Uh, so this might not turn out horribly, but uh, we'll have to see. Next up is a set I'm a bit excited for. Okay, I'm very excited for. From Voodoo 6K, it's MT3 SNES. This double shot ABS set will be set in the tall MT3 profile which I find pretty nice to type on depending on the angle of the keyboard. It doesn't hold a candle to Topre High Pro in my opinion, but it's still infinitely better than SA. I still have dreams GMK SNES will someday come to reality, but for now this is a very, very acceptable substitute. I hope the double shot will be done well and we don't get reports of disappointments like we did with Mateo and Susu Watari. The colors and legends seem pretty on point for me, so this is a set that I'll be in it to win it for, if it comes to fruition, and someday, GMK SNES, come to us. Last in the keycap news is SA2600 Round 2 by York Chan. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, is this really a set that demanded a Round 2? I mean, it's basically the GMK Iris of SA sets, right? Like, they're gonna replace the old YCE color with the uh, YY, and the full layout is gonna be adjusted to better fit keyboards of the modern times, but... Come on, look at it. It's, I guess it's just not for me. But if you like blues, purples, yellows, have at it. But let's move on to some keyboard news with the Adelie by Abic 13. This is a 50% layout, which is inspired by the CA66, 45 ATS, and TMO50 Run 1. The physical shape for the case is inspired by a combination of the CA66, Elephant S7, and GMK Q1000 for those sides. That's a lot of inspiration, but hey, with all that inspiration, what does the keyboard feature? It is a gasket mounted uh, board with 60 degree typing angle, WS28 indicator LEDs and the caps, a daughter board for that sweet, sweet centered USB port and a bottom brass weight. And while it's not spe uh, specified, I assume it'll be a USB-C port because, uh, come on, it's, it's 2020. The layout, eh, not really for me, but as a small keyboard, it does look nice and I can see a lot of people in the 40% crowd really loving this like they did the TMO50. Yeah, it's pretty nice and filling out the board with different kits doesn't seem too bad, but hey, I don't know that much about 40% kits. It looks like a standard 40% kit would work fine. The weight is pretty interesting, but like I said, at the end of the day, I can't really use sub 60% boards. But if you're in that crowd, this is the board to take a look at and consider. 
Next up, let's talk about the Wyvern by Albert of Mystic Works. This keyboard was inspired by the Aegis and the idea of having a left-handed numpad. Since there aren't too many in this community, the uh, brass or polycarbonate plate will be top mounted uh, to an aluminum top that will have seamless sides. I think that's gonna be a trend going forward. A brass weight will be available in the typing angle, six degrees. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool and I honestly prefer to see Southpaw numpads over that macro key column that we're pretty used to seeing. I'm a bit curious to see what the pricing will be, but overall this could be a good bet for people still in the hunt for a 65% with a numpad because a lot of people, since you gotta work from home now, you gotta, you gotta excel those numbers. You know what I'm saying? Excel those numbers. Next up is a keyboard that I'm a little bit hyped for. It's the Cyberboard by Cuomo Langma. I remember seeing renders of these on Z Frontier's Chinese community a month or so ago, and uh, I am so down. The layout is a 75% with some blockers separating the arrow keys from the bottom row, there's separation for the F keys, and there's a blocker above the right arrow for the logo. The back of the keyboard, that's, that's the real treat. That's what we're all honestly here for, right? Those LEDs, those be a lot of LEDs, programmable LEDs. Apparently the inspiration of this board comes from Tesla Cybertruck, and that's where you see the size and that bulkiness. It's an interesting source of inspiration. There's not too many details about the board yet, but I'll be following this closely, closely. I'm curious. Next up, we have the Raindrop 60% by Lane Wear, which is a gasket mounted 60% with the option to tray mount. The case is aluminum, two pieces, one top, one bottom, 70 degree typing angle, 18 mil front height, brass weight on the bottom back side. It looks like the plate will be gasket mounted via some small rubber tabs on the sides and hopefully that will be enough to get the full effect of the gasket mounting for both sound and feel, probably more of sound. Especially since uh, those tray mount posts are still existing. If they're way too high and too close to the PCB, what's the point if the PCB ends up constantly making constant contact with the tray mount posts? I'm not sure how I feel about those bits on the side as well, the aesthetic of the extended sides for the top, but we'll just have to see what the price ends up being on whether or not I'll be interested. I like the raindrops on top though. That does look nice. Okay, let's talk about a TKL, specifically the Iron 180 by Smith & Rune. After their Iron 165, this looks to be their next project, but what does this TKL feature? 7 degree typing angle, gasket mount, less than a 17 mil front height, seamless design once again, USB-C daughter board, via compatible PCB, color matched RSN keycap. And apparently there was also some plate analysis done to try to achieve a uniform plate deflection similar to the work done on the Iron 165. This is uh, interesting in concept, but uh, I'm gonna have to remain really skeptical about how I feel about it until it's you know under my fingertips and I can type on something that is analyzed. It's nice that they provide their own analysis and insights, but I have my own doubts about it. Overall, the board ain't that bad looking. It's overall clean. Simple, a nice weight on the back. So have at it, it looks pretty cool. Last of the news is a quick topic. It's as quick as it's small. It's the Atom 47 Round 2 Revision 4 by Martin What? If you have a Vortex core and you want a QMK replacement PCB, this is where you go. All south facing switches, QMK, ESC protection, rotary encoder support. It's the way to pimp out a Vortex core or use for your own small 40% keyboard. Check it out. That's it for this week in keyboard. Sorry about the random and abrupt change in scenery. If you like this video, hey, consider subscribing and liking. Helps out this tremendous, this, yeah, this channel tremendously. Words, they're very difficult. More videos on the way, which is also partly why I'm using this set and not, you know, the main set, which might be torn down anyways. If you saw my vlog, you'll know. If you haven't, consider watching it. Um, it's linked down below or somewhere. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I hope everyone stays healthy, stays safe, and no matter what, Keep keyboarding. Man of interests, and see you in the next video.